Welcome back to Stogie Geeks episode 266. This is volume 3. This is the sticks of the week section. I still have the crew here who's sitting in. They're going to chime in and let us know what they've been smoking. But this is the rating process that we have here on Stogie Geeks. I have live in studio the crew from Uphill Productions. Check them out, uphillproductions.com. Uh, fascinating show and hopefully a series of shows that's happening right here in our ocean state. Um, just to give you a background uh, here on the Sticks of the Week. Uh, we have a Stogie Geeks rating process here um, that extends from the cigar is lawn mulch. <laughs> uh, the cigar is an angler, meaning you would throw it off a boat and not finish it. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of those around. Uh, a fiver, meaning we would buy five, you know, uh, there. Uh, box split, box split with a friend, box worthy. Mm. Fight Chuck Norris for it. And like the that. Oasis. So if you hear me start uh, uh, saying some of these uh, there, you now have a synopsis as to what's going on. So the uh, very first stick I had was the Griffins Nicaragua. I had a Robusto. It's a 5 by 54 Wrapper is a Nicaraguan Habano. The binder is a Dominican Polito. And the filler is Nicaraguan Honduran and Dominican. On a scale of 1 to 10, complexity, flavor, and balance. Complexity, I gave it a 9. Flavor, I gave it an 8. Balance, I gave it a 9. It's available in three different sizes. Wow. I had posted those uh, sizes on stogiegeeks.com. Click on the stogie section. You can comment on that uh, there as well. I will respond to all of the comments for sure. Or if you have any comments on this show, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Uh, in regards to this stick here, uh, this is uh, it's a Robusto. It delivers a mix of cocoa, some cedar notes, but it does have that, what we dub here on the show is the Davidoff hay. It's that, um, that crisp, uh, grass, earthy flavor that you get from smoking a Davidoff. Well, no wonder the Griffin's Nicaragua is produced there. <laughs> so it does have that component. Uh, the cedar begins to increase with some cocoa notes. Uh, at the end, the cedar is joined, uh, and it, it, you will smoke this thing way down to the nub. Uh, shame, 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 shame on cigar shops for not even having this. We have 42 <laughs> cigar shops around us, and one of them has it. One of them <clears throat> has it. Uh, it's amazing. You should try it. If you want a link as to where to get it, I can provide that for you. Joe H. Stogiegeeks.com. It is the uh, Griffin Nicaragua. If you've had a Griffin from way back in the day, um, I think it's fascinating when you look and, and you talk about the Nicaraguan boom, David, mm -hmm. uh, and Becky, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and Carmine, for that matter, right? <laughs> um, when you have a classic facing like Griffin, right? Or Romeo and Julieta, who I don't think did a successful job of it. Right. But when they start mixing some of the Nicaraguan flavor in there, you know that the Nicaraguan is here to stay. Well, you know, because like Absolutely. when you first start your cigar to the end of the cigar, you can taste it the whole time yeah. from it. Yeah. You know, like the earthiness, like you were saying, and it is from the time you light it to the time you end it. Yep. And Did you ever have a, a Griffin Robusto? I have. Did you have a Griffin Robusto Nicaragua? I did not. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I need that one. Yeah, I, I have one. So All right, see me cool. after the show. I'll give you some of mine. You <laughs> right. give me some of yours. We share here. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great stick. Uh, this is a drum roll for sure. I gave it a box worthy. Yeah, right, I cool. actually bought a box. Now, uh, I'm oh, known. Good. I'm Glad known, you have a box. I, I'm, I'm known <laughs> as a little bit of a stickler when it comes to the rating, but I actually judge it on my consumer behavior. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if I bought a box, it gets box worthy. If I would only smoke five within a six-month period, I'd give it a fiver. Right. If I would throw it off a boat, it's an angler, right? Yeah. So that being said, the Griffin Nicaraguan Robusto, I gave it a box worthy. Yeah. Another one I had was the Gran Habano uh, Number no. 5 Limitada 2011 Maduro. Uh, format I had was a Robusto. It's, uh, that Robusto is a uh, 5x52. Wrapper binder, uh, Nicaraguan. Filler is Costa Rican, so you're going to have 
a little right. bit of saltiness yeah, yeah, yeah. going yeah, yeah. in there, right? Yeah. I have a little bit of saltiness, complexity, flavor, and balance. Scale of 1 to 10, I gave it an all 8, right, across the board. Uh, it's available in five different sizes. Uh, this is the strongest blend that Grand Ho in the Grand Habano profile, right? Grand Habano is uh, one of those blends that some, some cigar shops, some of the retail cigar shops have um, within their selection. Uh, they also have an online presence too, you know. Uh, what I like about it is it's somewhat price protected. I know some cigar companies don't price protect when it comes to online. Yeah. And then some, uh, some, some do. Uh, like I said, it was the strongest blend. It delivered uh, cream, chocolate, espresso, and a salty sweetness that you will not forget. That sounds phenomenal. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, what's even more phenomenal is the price point. Like it, it's great. Yeah, Habana. especially if it's like protected too, <gasps> yeah. which is nice. So then you're not going to get like all the tax increase that they want to throw on you here or there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, That's it's, nice. It's definitely interesting. Uh, nice. Smoke. Um, now, if you, if you Google like a Grand Habano number five, there's some other labels that, that come up. I took a picture of it. It's on stogiegeeks.com, right underneath the uh, Stogie section. It's the Limitada 2011 series. So, you know, it's got some age on it, which, as you know, the more it ages, the better it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Age will take a $4 cigar and make it smoke like a $10 cigar. Right. And no age will take a uh, $14 boutique and make it smoke like an angler. Mm -hmm. Just saying, <laughs> right? There it's true. <laughs> uh, I did give it a box worthy. Uh, as well, uh, I bought a box. They're they're they're, they're very amazing. Um, had the opportunity to connect with them uh, with Grand Habano, and for the Stogie Geeks listener, uh, they're gonna be uh, slated to uh, come on the show, and we're gonna be getting a interview coming up. So you want to stay tuned for that. You can log on to StogieGeeks.com, follow us through social media, and you'll know uh, what's going on with the show. Dave, you like cigars? Love them. <laughs> what what have you been smoking? You don't have to go into crazy complexity flavor, but 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 what have you been smoking? Uh, what's the uh, what's the one we've been smoking? I talked about the lunatic. Oh, the lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wasn't a big fan. Oh well. You know. Yeah. He normally it, it depends on Dave Dave's time <laughs> crunch. Yeah. Uh, because he's a busy man. <laughs> so that's Liga, true. Liga, I know what he smokes. The Liga Pravada <laughs> number nine. I smoke a lot. Mm -hmm. Short story. Mm -hmm. Short story at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, it really goes on, uh, you know, time and how many scars I already had. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. A, a lot of it. Sometimes I go into a scar shop and I have to work. So, mm -hmm. you know, I want something just to have something. Right. And then there are some times that I go into a cigar shop and I have to work and I have. And I'm like, okay, computer goes to the side. That's a high rating because this is phenomenal. Right. You know? And of course, my email gets backed up, and you know it's yeah. a tragedy. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah. So uh, uh, no, there's certain ones that you wanna you wanna smoke to enjoy them, mm -hmm. and then there's certain ones that you just want a smoke. Sure. For a quick time. Yep. yep. Yeah. I think you 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 and I are on the same uh, page yeah. with that for sure. Absolutely. And a lot of it there's sometimes there are a lot of times in the day, unfortunately or fortunately, depending. You know, if I'm busy, um, that's good. It means the business is making money, right? But I can only have one stick. It's like a one shot, one kill. Yeah. Right? Like I, I only have this window and you know, your day gets booked up. Who are you places. taking with you to the Who, island? Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Perfect. Uh, I've only had one Oasis on the show and I've been here since January 2nd of 2017. So okay. there's a lot of vendors that are like, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, uh, I don't know. That's uh. What'd you think of yeah, it? Yeah, I was gonna. What? What'd you think of it? What's the oasis? Well, I I, I can't divulge that. You oh, have to you have to shit. watch Story Geeks. That's uh, how we get listeners. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go through right. all the episodes, right? There you go. Well, it's only fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's only, it's fair. only 266. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's only 266 episodes, and I've been on since like, uh, where are we? 50, 50. Well, I've probably been on since 201, maybe off the top of my head. So. Well, then we need to oh, work at. We gotta work at this. Only 66. I think honestly, you should probably play it live in. Your cigar bar, just saying. I agree. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's four shops that actually do that. Yeah. There's, there's, there's two in Texas. Uh, there's one in upstate New York. And Which one? Uh, I used to live in upstate New York. Queensbury. Oh, uh, all right. I used to live in the Albany area, Waterville, Troy, yeah. Latham. There's one in Latham, yeah. which is interesting. Queensbury, which is upstate New York, <laughs> which is, uh, it's like 
George area, Lake George, yeah, yep. next town yep, over. Yep, absolutely, yep. yep. So, yeah. I so, know it well. Yep, they, they watch it, and I get uh, tons of email and criticism for sure. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how did you not like that stick? You know, it's, <laughs> it, it's so funny. Um, well, it's everyone's palate. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, it's palate-driven. I, I try to I, – I just speak to my palate, and when we have other guests and co-hosts on the show and they do their thing, um, sometimes we, we go back and forth, uh, you know, some, some more than others. Right. Uh, there, and – it's funny. What I think is fascinating is a Stogie Geek li- listener who chimes in after the show, where we keep the conversation going all week long or mm-hmm. or whichever. Uh, when they watch the show and, and and they they try to, you know, we think you would like this. We know Paul would like this. Paul is 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 Yona and the, the the host. I'm the co-host, and we know that you won't like this. Mm. And th- and then they ship me a sample. Well, why ship it to me? If you know, I'm <laughs> right? Uh, you know, you, you always get the ball busters. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta love it. Yeah, <laughs> At least they're thinking of you. Yeah. I have a story <laughs> geeks listener who actually took a rolling class, and he wants to send me the sticks, and he's so hesitant. Like he shipped me some craft beer. He shipped me some other sticks. I'm like, I, I want, I want to smoke you. I'll be objective, yeah, like you know absolutely. what I mean. He's like, I don't yeah. know. Oh, you know. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> he's, the, yeah. he's worried you're gonna bully him. Right, right, right. <laughs> Angler. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's a lot of fun to to have that dialogue going back yeah. and forth. With I have some to say, it. I went to um, the DR and rolled my own, mm. and uh, I would think they were Oasis. There you go. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I have to ask yeah. how that, that's inflated uh, opinions of oneself, it, it, right it's there. It's very difficult. To <laughs> I was, I, I was I a one imagine. upper now. No. Yeah. No. no, it was. Um, it was. It was. They they helped you with it, but everything was all hand done. So so like, how do you do it like hand wise? Like, what's the process there? There's Not a little, rolling there's a joint. Little, no, there's a little machine, and you stick all the filler in. You got to pick out all the filler, and then you got to yeah. pick yeah. out what your wrapper is going to be. So I did all Cuban filler. And then I did a Nicaraguan wrapper. Mm. Done yeah. deal. How did it come out? Came out great. Uh-huh. And I, I um, seasoned it for about six months in yeah. at Hill and Harbor. Yep. Yeah. And there you go. Them all. Glad your membership is <laughs> going right. to good use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping them. I'm keeping them oh, good for you. Oh, was I supposed to say that out loud? <laughs> if you watch episode 154, you can see it done. And by the way, I'm yeah. Oh, I'll make great. up the number. It's I'll crazy. make up the number, but right. it, it, around it's, that, around that, it's, area. it's cool to watch. It's a little cut <laughs> thing. And yeah. yeah, it's good. It's it's if you've ever. Cody, been, Cody's new to all this. When, well, when I, I love Cody. When I did my first uh, radio broadcast for my show, uh, uh, I used to have here in the province Metro Cigar Club Radio, which is how this started, and uh, we it was for a 25th anniversary party for a show that's been on the air for 25 years straight. And for those of you in Radio Land, if you're on straight, it's just sort of a miracle. The fact that you're on for 25 years means that you have riv- riveting content. Right. Uh, and so that being said, uh, it was at the Dorrance. Oh, nice. And Fancy. you smoke in there. You couldn't smoke in there. So I'm like, yeah. I'm bringing a roller. <laughs> and, 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 the radio, and the radio station's like, whoa. Like, we are, cannot. I go, no, no, no. I'm bringing a roller. They're going to see the process. Mm-hmm. And then there's a cigar shop. Uh, just over the, the the George Washington Bridge that we're all gonna go to, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna smoke them there, and yeah. and it was it was an amazing hit. Like it was, I was probably two weeks into the industry uh, of the radio, and uh, when I did it, it was it, uh, we've I've had just as much people show up for that as the 25th anniversary. That's it was, awesome. It was awesome. Well, wow. and Good job. and what, what 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 what's pretty cool about it, um, when you have a live rolling event. I think uh, it's it's a great tutelage for your customers. Yep. But they have to have a little bit of timing involved. And what I mean by that is once it's rolled live on location, you have 24 hours to smoke it mm-hmm. or you got to wait at least 31 days. I recommend 45 days. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, because right, it'll yeah. ta- so it, it needs a little bit of aging. Yeah. But uh, there were a couple events locally, probably 2007, 8, that actually did a series of that. And if you ever have a chance to, to have one of those – or, you know, if, if, if you're managing a place and, and someone, uh, you know, uh, has that opportunity, I think it, 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 it's a great learning experience. We know some people. For your customers, yeah. you know, for sure. I, I had the uh, Liga Pravada Unico Series Papa Fritas. What do you think? I, uh, 
I like that. Banging. Yeah. Right. I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. That. I love that. What's that saying? He goes from like Liga let's, to... Let's get that's his that. favorite. Before we talk about it, let's get to <laughs> some right. stogie geek content, right? All right. The size was a Corona, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a four and a half by 54. Your wrapper is a Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro. Binder is a Brazilian Maltafina. The filler is Honduran with a mix of Nicaraguan. I love Honduran Nicaraguan. Me too. Right? Good stuff. For those story geeks listeners at home, you can have me at Honduran Nicaraguan combo <laughs> if you, you know. Uh, complexity, I gave it an eight. Flavor, I gave it a nine. Balance, I gave it an eight. It's available in one size. <laughs> yep. Um, that one. It opens up. We with, have it. <laughs> I know. I know. I've had it. It opens up with a combination of uh, black pepper mm-hmm. with some tobacco Ooh. cherry. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, you get some additional flavors of my favorite coffee and leather. Um, and, and then from there, uh, what I like about it is I put in the Stogie Geeks notes that it's a great stick to add to your travel humidor. And what I mean by that is, you know, it makes a great second stick. Mm-hmm. If you only have 45 minutes and you can smoke one stick, yeah. this is a good go to. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. you can do it. Uh, mm-hmm. Amazing. Uh, it's golfable. Usually, if it's Nicaraguan and Honduran, it's got a little bit of construction to it. Yeah. So, you know, or, or fishable, meaning, you know, outside elements. It just stands up to the wind, so it's a little uh, more durable. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There, there are some Connecticut's you try to golf with, and, oh, like, it, it. it's all free. Feels apart. Yeah. 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 yeah, rides over, right? Um, that being said, they, they, they come in little packs, right? So they're, they're a very portable, awesome cigar. I gave it a box worthy for sure, even though a box is, 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 is a pack, but, you know, you can, you can get them. In 20 counts and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I've bought a box from H&H. So he yeah. did. Yeah. 25% off to everybody. Right. There you you go. buy a box. There you go. So, <laughs> so you guys like the Papas Fritas? Oh, oh yeah. love it. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. good. Yeah, I had it. Uh, yeah. Johnny and I brought it in, and I mean, it's one of our best sellers. It's, yeah. a, it's a great cigar. It's a great smoke. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that when you start with it and when you end with it, like there's a lot of different levels of flavor through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's like a consistent smoke, like in the sense of like flavor wise, it changes from like pepper to smooth to heavy to medium to pepper again. Like how they rolled it, they rolled it consistently right Mm -hmm. to make it an experience versus just a cigar. Yep. And I think if you're a beginner smoker, you can handle it yeah you, yeah you just make sure it's they like a eat. medium yeah just make full. sure that they eat you know what i mean i always yeah. ask you know if if, if where, when i worked in a retail shop i was asked you know uh did you eat yeah you can try this because it it's a really good educational component for you to yeah. see the cigar transition right you know, for sure as the beginning half second half right last half and that cigar transitions yeah. multiple times and it's nice yep. it's always yep. a nice transition and it's very unassuming too yeah you know it's yep. very unassuming Price point doesn't break the bank. Right. It's, it's, it's just got a lot of positive aspects to it. Uh, oh, question from the audience. Yes. Oh, so how do I? Right, so the question was uh, just so you know, while we're repeating, the, yeah. the listeners can't hear Mark chime in my ear. Mm-hmm. Um, the question was how does Scar. Uh, how, how does a consumer know uh, that a cigar would, would go from uh, either heavy or medium to mild? I have my answer. You want to give an answer? You I can give an answer. I mean, it. a dummy answer for them? I <laughs> if mean, someone walked like into your <laughs> shop, there's no <laughs> dummy right. answer. All right. right. No, I'm just saying like whether they're role that, playing. Yeah. Like, you okay. Know, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I mean like, 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 a, like a real quick rundown. Sure. Um, all right. So either there's three ways of finding out about it. Either you have a really good humidor staff person on that has smoked it and can tell you about it. Either you've done your research or basically you can look at what the wrappers are and you'll know that as well. Um, basically anything that I know about any of the cigars that are in the lounge, mm-hmm. I have personally smoked them. I have smoked probably, which is good for me as a, like a female. Well, not health-wise. Well, not health-wise. <laughs> well, no. Well, actually, statistics, statistics say that cigar smokers outlive non-smokers. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to keep um, smoking then. Plus, there's worse <laughs> components in food. And yeah. you'll get whatever you're getting from food, okay. th- then, right. then you would cigar. True story. Um, basically, like upper. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. The, the statements here do not reflect story geeks, friends, staff, or the FDA. Right? No. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I have no. to make sure the attorney's not going to call after the show. Basically, <laughs> how, how you know whether the level of smoke is, e- is either A, if you had it, or if you know, like, if you're educated enough, you and that's the thing, like, don't ever feel like you're uneducated enough because 
trust me, like I got in this industry recently and everything I learned actually is from uh, Jackie Gobin and Jake Healy. I, used, mm-hmm. I worked for Hanley's um, on the nightclub side, interesting enough. Sure. And I'd spend my breaks over at uh, at the cigar bar side getting schooled on it. And um, basically it's a matter of palate and um, knowing what the filler is, what's going in it. Because what happens when something burns from a heavy to a light to changing to peppery has everything to do with the multiple layers of the fillers mm-hmm. and where the fillers are from. So like when you're looking at like a Nicaraguan, like they can either be peppery or heavy. And then when you get into Dominicans or like you can even get into Connecticut shades or the Maduros. But, um, and like you were saying with like Costa Rican, a lot of times it has like that coffee flavor mm. to it. Yeah. So it's, it's just knowing where the wrapper is, is made and what wrappers are involved. That's what's giving you the flavor is the multiple layers of wrappers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your but, answer? But it actually, <laughs> it, 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 it's spot on. Uh, okay. A, the, uh, most of the flavor of the cigar comes from the wrapper. Yep. That's most, why most people think it's at, the opposite. That's why I'm not a real big fan of uh, Gordo sizes. Okay. However, uh, your customers and sales across the country would prove me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. because they think for two extra dollars they're getting more of a stick, and yeah. they're really shortchanging themselves in flavor. Yeah, right? it's more filler right. versus well, be, wrapper. Because it's more filler than wrapper, right? Yeah. So if most of the flavor comes from the wrapper, then you know, uh, and this is why Lanceros, and this, this is a common theme here on Story Geeks, uh, where a lot of consumers don't even pay attention to Lanceros. Right. And you're really doing yourself a, a, a disjustice. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Lanceros will take that hour and a half if you smoke it slow and go through your motions. Mm-hmm. Bullet cut it if you can. <clears throat> get a small bullet or V cut it. Don't get yeah. in it. You know what I mean? Yep. And, then, and then you can keep going f- from there. So It's um, a nice porch smoke. Yeah, absolutely. Summertime smoke. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Just you relax. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't like them because they're portable. They don't like them because they're thin. And ironically, they don't do well. And and uh, from a retail perspective, right? And you know, I look at it as, you know, uh, get into some Lanceros because uh, you you really be surprised for sure. Absolutely. Uh, what what's there? But you know, I try to spend the spread the word, but it doesn't happen. Um, that's why you notice like a lot of shop owners or a lot of uh, rollers themselves who we interview here on this series of shows uh, every Monday, two p.m. Eastern time. Uh, stogiegeeks.com uh, you know you want to uh, definitely uh, they always go for the small smoke uh, yeah. as, as well I've never been a yeah. fan of the Gordo I've, I've had some Gordos I get some that I have to review here on our series of the show and you know lo and behold I'm just like you know I, 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 they don't get high ratings uh, there um, but I mean I can't believe Three, four years ago, we had 60 ring gauge. Now they have 70 and 80. Yeah. It's just like, it's crazy. Well, I think um, a lot of that is marketing and branding, just like with alcohol, same thing. Like, mm-hmm. people are going to go to what they, they think, you know, right. is the thing to do. Mm-hmm. And there's so many other brands out there now. I mean, it, I mean the, uh, the whole cigar industry is exploding at this point with, like companies that you never even heard of or sure. people hand rolling it. I mean, I, I think it's fun. I think it's interesting. It's just like how like, you know, the micro bar aspect or like, you know, like even doing like uh, whiskey is a big thing too. Like, and that's fun because the industry that we're in with you playing around with things that a lot of people might not like, mm-hmm. and then that might catch on. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the fun aspect of it is because there's always something going on, especially if you're drinking, which we do yep. with it. <laughs> yep. uh, you always have something fun to pair it with. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all word of mouth yep. and, and people need to like, just break out of the element of like what feels comfortable to them or what like other people say, like don't knock it till you try it. Sure. That's, that's the only thing I can say. Right. And then my second rebuttal would, would be the region. For yeah. sure. Like sure. the region would give you, if you know, it's going to be complex or full uh, there. And then sometimes yeah. the year, like, obviously, if you mm-hmm. have a 2013 and a 2015, in theory, uh, everything kept the same, same same blend, same brand, just different year. Mm-hmm. Uh, what will happen is, te- by definition, uh, 94% of the time, it would smoke stronger if it's, if it's a... Uh, 2013. If it's a 2013 yeah. versus right. a 15. That's it's like the, like the La Aurora's, they, they came out with the yep. 2013. Some of them are like Carrillo wicked does strong. EP uh, does, yeah. does that too. Yeah. They give the, the uh, year. Yeah. I think it's important uh, for sure to, to actually do that. Uh, I have two more on my list. I have the La Flora Dominicana Double Lajero Chisel Maduro. 
Okay. I'm going to repeat that. La Flor Dominicana, <laughs> double Lajero. Hero. Chisel Apple. Maduro. It is a uh, 6x54 Ecuadorian Maduro wrapper. Binder is Dominican. Filler is Dominican. Complexity, I gave it a 9. Flavor and balance, I gave it an 8. Uh, strength starts off medium to full. You get a chocolate, nutty sweetiness as you get going. You get some coffee. You get some leather. You get some rich tobacco, old school tobacco flavor, <coughs> which I tend to like. You know, uh, kind of mimics some of the classic facings for sure. Uh, it's rich and complex. Got a nice balance. Long, smooth finish uh, there. Towards the end, if you can, um, I don't want to say nub it, but the, the last third mm -hmm. is where it really kicks in. Um, you get some say that. some molasses, caramel, leather, and a tobacco sweetness, uh, you know, for sure. A lot of people uh, think the, the chisel thing's a gimmick um, because it, 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 the way it's shaped uh, at the end, it's supposed to mimic uh, pipe tobacco mm -hmm. coming out there. Uh, it's not meant to be cut. It's meant to just be slightly Twist. pinched or twisted or twisted mm -hmm. slightly, right? Don't <laughs> don't wrench it. It's slightly, and it, it's it's a good stick, you know. I like it. It's, I have had that one. Yeah, before. yeah, he's had yeah, it. It's a good stick. I like it better than the regular LFD double hero. Uh, that being said, I I like the smoothness of the chisel better. Uh, the regular chisel is good, but that being said, I gave uh, that uh, the La Flora Dominicana double hero <laughs> chisel Maduro. I gave it a box split. Nice. Well, not you know, bad. All right. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad, right? I mean, no. that's, that's I'll a, split one with you. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's a good. Uh, that then that would be box split with a friend. And some oh, of them, okay. some of them, I do box split with a friend. Uh, I have none for this episode, but some of them, um, the story behind it is kind of worth sharing with a friend. Like any of the Viaje series, you know how they have like the it's named after comic books and all mm -hmm. that stuff and or, or, or fictional characters and there's a zombie apocalypse and yeah all that stuff. the branding's cool on them too yeah i like the the yeah. signage on it it's cool. yeah so you know uh, uh a lot of the tatuajes uh, the, those if they're box splits for me I, I usually say definitely box split them with a friend uh you know you get more bang for your buck you can sit with your friend hey man a lady friend hey. either way <laughs> no think about it think about the concept of a box split with a friend it gives you a chance to see your friend 10 times exactly i you agree I mean? like you know you could say we, we're yeah. only gonna get together and smoke these sticks wait a minute there's 10 mm -hmm. we gotta get together 10 times yeah. you know good yeah. things can happen when you yes. get together 10 times absolutely you know <laughs> Ferris Bueller's Day Off movie. <laughs> Nine <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Nice. This is my movie pun. Um, what's your go-to? My go-to? Yes. Oh, man. Don't hate me for it. Um, I'm going to hate you. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, I really like the Connecticut Shades by my father's. Okay, yeah. I know that sounds crazy, but, no. I mean, if I if I have to go to something and get it quick and go, and, and I mean, if all around of everything that I've tried, that is the most solid Connecticut Shade that I've had. Mm -hmm. um, I like that, and then I like the La Florida Dominicana uh, La Knox a lot. Yep. It's de it's deceiving. It looks yeah. heavy, but it's not. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, I just got onto the Ariel by uh, Cornelius and Anthony. Mm. I'm like more of like a, a mild to medium bodied smoker. Mm -hmm. So yep. I mean, and that's the thing. Like even with that Liga that we were talking about earlier, like I've had it. I love it. it it's complex. It's a little heavier. I, I and I'm fine with that. The pepper for some reason. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm female. Like, females have more taste buds than males. And maybe that's why, like, peppery cigars. I'm not the one hugest fan again. of a uh, one up and <laughs> with my, yeah, my yeah. taste buds. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have way, way more, more we have way more taste buds than males. So it's different. Like, it's, it's different, you know, everyone's palate, like I was saying. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and the, I was smoking a Southern Draw Rose of Sharon today. Mm. Um, and then, I, of course, I like my ones that we can't really talk about. Why? Because oh. we can't sell them. Sure, but you can enjoy them. You can oh, yeah, them. I love my Cohiba C-Glows, yeah. ones and twos. So yeah. Dave had one earlier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. They go. Um, good. They go. Yeah, I mean, I'm more of like a, Con a Connecticut shade medium, mm -hmm. you know, full-bodied ones. I, I love them. I appreciate them. They're nice with a glass of red wine, like after dinner. That's something that, like, I'll have on occasion. But if I'm going to, like, be blasting sticks all day long, it's going to be, like, a, a mild to medium. Do you pair wine with cigars? I do, yeah. actually. I we, do. I, I, yeah. We actually just started doing a series here on Story Geeks with, with, with doing that. I've, oh, cool. I've always have. Uh, I, I, you know, I used to love the when it was BYOB sometimes. I'd roll in with like a bottle of wine and people would be like, 
Okay, Rico Suave. I'm <laughs> right. well, well, we would be best just friends. Watch Fox, <laughs> just watch your Fox News and drink your Bud Light now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, but they're like, well, why are you doing wine? I'm like, because it's it's it speaks to my palate. Absolutely. So yeah. what do you pair with, with some of the wines? Well, I, I'm a huge uh, white wine drinker. I love red wines as well. Um, I just got on to our friend brought it in the the Chocolans. They're Chocolans. good. The red. Yeah, right. We've got to introduce you to uh, one, yeah. of, one of uh, yeah. mm. yeah. one of one uh, of our friends who's uh, working with us. We're you trying, know, trying to get him on board with the show, but maybe okay. we could do something with him on pairing some cigars. With the, oh, with yeah, the they're oh, great. Oh, yeah. for sure. Just yeah, got some we, great we, wines. we actually want to do that. We, we, he'll, uh, Paul, yeah. he'll be a good one. Yeah, Paul had expressed that he wanted to to get into that. Uh, I'm a more red. So the more I can oh, be educated, cabs, on, that's the, him. But the more I can be educated on whites, like definitely bring someone in. I know, love for, for that. That's me, all day. That's, that's me all day. that's me all day. I yeah, we did a uh, wine tasting, which is fun at the bar. I actually brought in when we redo our wine list and stuff. Like I made it interactive with the customers. We're like, hey, we're gonna try out all these wines. Tell mm -hmm. me which ones are your favorites, mm. and then they'll go on the list. Yeah. So which is pretty cool. And then yeah. we also do like for the wine pairings, we're doing a um, cigar dinner which are normally wine-based on uh, unlimited glasses. Imagine that. There you go. <laughs> we have one coming up uh, in a couple weeks, and, and they're date, paired. What date would that be? It's the 28th. Oh, of March? Yes. Perfect. So what would you, <laughs> what would you, um, what would you pair with, with a white, white wine cigar-wise? Okay, so I, I normally like my New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs. Ooh. And yeah. that, that's when I go to with my go-to with uh, my father's Connecticut Shade or the La Knox. Mm -hmm. um, when I drink a Cabernet, I'll normally go with a medium-bodied. Um, sometimes I'll go with like an Alec Bradley or I, <laughs> yeah, see, they know. <laughs> um, and, and I've actually like, I've been, I've been trying out the new Cornelius and Anthony's as well. Mm -hmm. So they're fun. Those like the, good. yeah, they're good. Mm -hmm. They're good. So I just, we just got those in. I'm trying those out. Um, but normally it's like a, a medium body to full. Like if I have a red, like a red wine, it's an Alec Bradley. Yeah. <clears throat> Number 59, right? Yeah, yeah it is. You know, it. <laughs> you know, it. <laughs> you know, nice. yeah, we're, we're actually going to get into that. So if, uh, offline we'll, we'll, we'll chat and get a future, uh, uh, tasting. Paul had said that, uh, after the new year that we wanted to do more, 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 more pairings. Cause we always do, you know, everybody does scotch and bourbon. And whiskey, yeah. mm. you know. Uh, but you know, uh, I've been doing it with uh, some some pretty cool craft beers as well. Oh, we did uh, one too. In Bloody Marys, yeah. let me tell you yeah. something. I, oh I, yeah, I love my Bloody Mary on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I I got some nice cigars that actually pair well with with Bloody Marys. Well, then we need to talk because you know? I'm yeah. there on Sunday days and I make what the Bloody Marys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a mimosa guy, so yeah. no, Bloody yeah, Marys yeah, the way to go. What would you Mary. What would you pair with Bloody Mary? Uh, great question. Uh, I would actually pair a uh, uh, actually. Uh, wow, that's so funny. Uh, it's it's the next lead-in to the stick. Uh, and I didn't even know. No, that. You, it, it does happen actually a lot more than you know. Um, I actually had this with the Bloody Mary, a Tatuajes Series oh. P Miami. I haven't had that. Fill me in on it. Well, let me, uh, well first of all, <laughs> they, they they started rolled just here. Okay. And that's what's, uh, you know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, yeah, and they're, a lot of them, they, they get a lot of mixed reviews because uh, they only come in a cellophane bundle. Okay. Right? They're not boxed there. Mm. Um, there are no labels on them. I like it. Yeah. I like the incognito uh, yeah, of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the, uh, the one I had was the P1 Gorda. Size was a uh, 5.6 by 46. Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. That's the key. You, you need some sort of a Habano wrapper, right, mm -hmm. with Bloody Mary, right? So uh, there, uh, binder is Nicaragua. Filler is a mixed filler of Nicaraguan because it's the mixed filler from the Tatuaje Brown series, you know, the brown label, mm -hmm. right? So uh, complexity, I gave it a nine. Flavor and balance, I gave it an eight. It's available in two sizes, a P1 or a P2, right? Okay. Uh, easy enough. Yep, uh, uh, easy enough. This unique stick is medium to full bodied with flavors of espresso, light cedar, black pepper, and cocoa. Mm. It has additional notes of sweet cream, <coughs> toast, charred oak, especially towards the second half. I gave it a box worthy. Whoa. Uh, that was the Tatuaje Series P Miami. And here's the kicker they're like considered seconds, you know, seconds in the yeah. industry. Mm -hmm. So they're dirt cheap. 
Mm. Yeah. Like we're talking like four bucks. All right, <laughs> I mean, cool. Like, uh, wow. you know, like I'm going down to Miami. Is that? Bring some back. I'll bring like, some yeah. back yeah. when yeah. I go to Miami. I mean, like, you know, because there are a lot of boutique blends that are out there, right. and they're asking twelve to fourteen. Not to go off on a tangent, but that's going to come back and bite them. I think yeah. business wise, right? We can spend a whole other episode on that, mm-hmm. right? So only, it's only so, I mean, all you got to do is look at statistics, right? The uh, Next one on the chopping block of the week is Toys R Us, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it, it's the weekly theme. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, everybody's yeah. you know, uh, everybody's pouring homage over Toys R Us, and they're getting all upset, but yet they were shopping at Amazon, a bigger box store, and all, all there. Yep. So, like, what, what are you gonna do, right? right. So, I think consumers-wise, uh, it'll take a while for it to catch up within the cigar market, uh-huh. but the boutique fourteen dollar stick retail is is gonna be a huge factor 2020 you absolutely because I mean? consumers are going to be like are you like really yeah. Like, yeah. you know exactly. yeah makes sense. right you know it, Ser- it, serious you know. consumers and people that aren't looking to show off right. yeah absolutely right you know yeah. and 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 i'm a label peeler anyway so when i light light a stick i don't care what it is i i peel it i don't like the label on my cigar it drives yeah. me nuts right and so with that being said you know i i go i i go through th- that and like people they like to say oh i have this or whatever you know i you know do what you got to do, you know, right. if you do it. But but I'm telling you, these Twahe Series P's, it's like crazy. I had to try them out. I'm going yeah. down to Miami in, yeah. a, in a little bit, so I'll bring some back yeah, for you guys. you can look them up. Right. Um, they, they were originally rolled by, by one roller. They were, they're, they're very That's limited. That's cool. They're very That's limited. Cool. And, you know, I like the underground aspect of it. Yeah. Like, you know, because you, you take the Twahe, Viaje, the, you know, uh, Christoph, you know, the, 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 some of the boutique blends that are really putting a dent into the classic facings. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're really put, putting in a hard dent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when, when it comes in. And let's talk about it. You know, you, you, you only get paid for first place, meaning you can only smoke one cigar at once, right? Mm-hmm. Even if you have two cigars a day, you go first place to second place. But, you know, at the moment, it's you only get paid for first place. And those, cig- th- those types of companies are really sticking out in my head. You know, I have a list of, of uh, cigar companies to watch for 2018. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Black Label. Of it's course. Just, yeah, they're, they're, you know, definitely, you know, I'd, yeah. I'd be interested in see where they're going. In Tatuaje, I began the show with the Negotiant, which is their Connecticut Broadleaf uh, there, which is totally different from right. what Tatuaje has been right. I would. So, that's right up my alley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so it's, 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 it's pretty neat, you know. It, it, it's cool. neat to see where the industry's going. Plus, everybody waits to IPCPR. What do you think about IPCPR? Yeah, you know, I don't know. Is it lost? It's uh, see, because business wise, right? Business wise, with with IBCPR, it's you know uh, before its purpose was for the retailers to get exclusive deals if they showed up to the event. Right now, as a shop owner, you don't have to show up and you can still get the deals. Mm-hmm. I think it kind yeah. of waters it down. Well, that's when you're getting into the whole thing of like the three for ones and all that. Like, yeah. I mean, the the mentality of how they're doing the market nowadays, it, it, they're so stuck in the cigar box yeah. realm of how of doing things that um, I feel like people aren't thinking outside of it. Yeah. Which I mean, I I, I aim to do. Mm-hmm. I I. I uh, it's not it's not my whole thing but i just like i have so many ideas in my head like how do we do this different and i feel like a lot of the cigar companies like you were saying with like the boutique cigars stuff like that and then the ones that are come up and coming that are keeping their prices low mm-hmm. they have the right mindset because the fact is is that it's not about how much the things cost anymore it's about the product mm-hmm. right. so i feel like people are more keen to that now that they they're more willing to research and find out things just like listeners today that were like listening and asking questions which is awesome i mean Mm -hmm. people should not like no question is a dumb question sure and i feel like a lot of people that are in the cigar industry and and i mean in all aspects of the industry whether it's booze wine whatever everyone's starting like the underdogs are coming through which i like i Mm -hmm. like that i'm like get it you know like make your money and, and work hard and i like that um and they're they're taking down the bigger ones and that's because I feel like um, a lot of times with like, like you were saying, it's become such a big thing. It's such a known well brand that people like that run that whole aspect of that are lazy now. 
Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah, you don't even have to show up. You can just get this deal yeah. because it's become more of like a, mon- a monetary <clears throat> gain for them versus mm-hmm. a consumer gain. Yeah. So I think that's that's why like you know like you're talking about the the number twos and stuff. I think that's great. Like the P ones and P twos. Plus, I think the barrier to entry is a lot lower to start your own brand or brand. Right. Yeah. Ba- brand or blend. Oh yeah, this whiskey's. Good. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta so, work. So, to- well, we're gonna finish. How do, how, do, how, do you, <laughs> how do you feel? And I, and this is this is one thing that I've seen. Um, as far as on the pricing of the cigars, mm-hmm. the way the boxes come. What do you mean, like twenty count or twenty five? No, no, no. Just the presentation. The you whole mean? presentation, you know, between the ceramic, uh, like the uh, crystal boxes, and the, you know, some of the boxes that are, you know, are you paying for the box or are you paying for the cigars? Well, um, great question. Uh, it, it. I think it's paying tra- for the for the box with you, the cigars. A box box price is very very high when it gets passed on to the consumer but right. because there's so many barriers that the con- by the time it gets to the consumer you have here in Rhode Island you have a cap tax but other states it's a percentage of the value of the stick no but I'm talking about how they're He's- pricing their cigars based on the boxes that they oh, yeah. come in yeah the bo- box is probably like that Davidoff one that you know it's like a crystal yeah. You can get your name engraved. Well, on. well, well, uh, great, great conversation. Certainly for another episode, mm-hmm. for sure. But, like, you can't say Davidoff and give a one word. In it. Some right. companies are on their own planet, right? And Davidoff is clearly, oh, yeah, totally clearly somewhere else. At, at another level, right? Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But I can tell you that at least probably 20% of the stick is usually the box. Yep. That's, yeah. You know, that's why. And if that wasn't the case, now I know I'm going to get email from shop owners. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all in trouble because of you, no, Dave. No, but if that wasn't the case, when you order reorders, right. don't sometimes you keep the box and they ship it to oh, you. That's what bundles. I mean. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Because it's yep. cheaper. Yep. Yeah. And so, therefore, you can keystone differently or however you run your business. That's really what I was and, getting and, at. And then go forth from there, you know. Yeah. But some, some do it right. And, 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 and like other uh, companies, some, some don't do it right. Some just, you know, can operate uh, on their own planet. And that's what I think is fascinating about this industry. Because what happens is you have a blend, and I'll finish up with this, is you have a blend and, or a brand, and they're on their own business model. So the price isn't the price to be competitive in the market. It can, it can be. That's what I was saying but it's about the price yeah. based upon their economies yep. of scales. What it costs for them to produce the product. Yep. Now sometimes you have some that can produce it, and it could be a ten dollars stick, and they just turn around and say, "I'm going to make it fourteen. Mm-hmm. They sell it for seven. It gets Keystone plus a tax, and then there you go, Bing, Bang, Boom, business wise. Right. Right. But I mean, realistically speaking, it's it's a cost. So you know, the classic facings really have a edge up. But mm-hmm. they have an edge up because of economies of scale, sure. But they also have an edge up because they've been doing it for 400 years. Well, that's what I was saying, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, like, no yeah. matter what, you know, Romeo and Juliet can take a year off of advertising in any publication, and they'll still be okay. Exactly. Be because X yeah. amount of people are going to smoke their brand, and they're going to be expecting that's to right. walk into a shop and get that stick. Right. right. You know what yeah. I mean? So, fascinating industry. You got to come back for sure. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we got to do a wine segment <laughs> where we can sip some wine. Yeah. You want to come back, Carmine? I'll come back. <laughs> Give us an update. Hopefully I feel better next time I come. I won't there get you go. up there. There you go. <laughs> With that being said, quick production note. Coming up next couple of episodes, we have, you want to talk about a fascinating business model? We have a cigar shop that rolls their own cigars and only sells what they roll. And we're going to talk about that from a business model. Nice. That's and you awesome. want to talk about ultra, ultra boutique. It's coming up on rotation. Make sure you log on to all of our social media. I've been your host this week, Joe Hosempa. Thank you for listening to Stoic Geeks, episode 266. We'll see you next week.